Hi, this is Ann from Design Bundles, and today I'm going to show you how to create and add a diagonal lines pattern to some letters in Adobe Illustrator. All right, let's get started. All right, we'll start by creating a new document. So I'll come over here to create new. I'll come up here to the top and choose print, and then we'll choose letter. Then we'll come down here to the bottom right and choose create. Okay, so first we'll make our pattern. I'm going to hit M on my keyboard, which will bring me to the rectangle tool, which is right over here. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle like this. For the next step, we'll need to use snap to point. So I'm going to come up here to view, come down here to snap to point and make sure there's a check mark next to it. Okay, so I'm gonna click off. I'll hit P on my keyboard. I'm just going to click right here and you can see that it's showing you where the corner is. I'll come down here to the bottom corner and I'll click right there exactly on that corner. Okay, I'm going to click right on that line and then I'm going to grab a handle and hold shift and option and just make it a little bit bigger. This will be shift and alt on a PC. Okay, now we need to add a point right here in the middle. So to do that, I'm going to go to object, path, add anchor points. And now if we hit A on our keyboard, we can see that other anchor point. Now I'll hold Option or Alt, and I'll click this and pull it right up to this corner until my cursor turns white and it's snapping to that corner. And I'll do that again and hold Option or Alt, and bring it down to this corner until it snaps. Okay, so this is what is going to form our diagonal pattern. Now to make a pattern, the original box needs to have no fill and no stroke. So I'm going to come over here to the appearance. Now, if you're not seeing some of these windows, you can just come up here to window and find them here. Here's appearance. And I'm just going to go to the fly out on my appearance panel and go to clear appearance. And now I'll send this to the back. I think it's already in back, but I'll just go ahead and send it to the back with shift command left bracket. That shift control left bracket on a PC. And now I'm going to select each of these three lines and just make them a little bit thicker. So I've got my stroke right up here. If you're not seeing this bar, you can go to window control right here. Anyway, I'll increase the stroke. I want it pretty thick, I think. This looks good. Now I'm going to select it all and just resize it. This is going to be a pretty big diagonal shape. So I want it to be smaller, quite a bit smaller. And now all I have to do is just click and drag it into my swatches. And you can see it'll make a new pattern swatch right here. Now if I hit M on my keyboard, I'll draw a bigger shape. I'll get my fill in front and I'll choose that pattern. If we zoom in, you can see it's a perfect seamless diagonal shape pattern. And I'll just get rid of, whoops. I'll just get rid of the outline by clicking it and then choosing none right down here. Now all we need to do is make our letters. So I'm going to hit T on my keyboard and that'll bring me to the text tool. I'll just click once and I'll type M and B. I'll get on my selection tool and just grab a corner while holding shift and make it quite a bit bigger. And now we need a big chunky font. A good one that I like is storybook. And this one is free out on Defont if you want to download it. Okay, so Storybook Regular. I'm going to hold Option or Alt and just hit my right arrow to move these letters apart a little bit. And now I'm going to come over to my appearance. Now you'll notice in appearance, you have type and characters, and you really need to have all of the appearance items in your type, not characters. If we double click characters, we can see a fill here. So I'm just going to get rid of that. And I'll come up here to type, click on that, and just add a new fill. And as you can see, it's under type instead of characters now. Okay, so let's make our new fill, our new pattern swatch. I'll just click that. We've got a nice diagonal line fill. Now I also want this to have a stroke, so I'll click on stroke in my appearance, and I'm gonna make that black. I'm just going to increase it quite a lot. As you can see, we've got some weird problems here on the B. So I'm going to pull this stroke beneath the fill. And to do that, I need to get right over here in this area, not on any of these parts. 
and just click and drag it below the fill. Okay, and as you can see, it's still happening. And that's because this, the black lines of the diagonal do not have anything behind them. There's no white or anything like that. So I'm gonna add another fill here. And to do that, I'll just hold Option or Alt, and I'll click this one and drag it right down here, and I'll make a copy. Now I'll get on that lower fill, and we'll make this, I'm thinking, orange. Now you probably noticed that our outline kind of went away, part of it, and that's because our outline is now underneath that orange. So half of the seven is showing, and the other half of the seven is behind the orange. So let's just increase the stroke to, um, let's put it at 10. Okay, and this looks a lot nicer. Now I think it would look nice if we had a drop shadow on this. And to do that, I'm going to take this fill and this stroke and duplicate them. So to do that, I'll just hold Option or Alt and I'll drag those down here. So we have a couple copies below what we're seeing here. Okay, I'm gonna make this fill black also because this is going to be my drop shadow. And I'll select both of these and we just wanna move them over a little bit and down. So let's go to Effect, Distort and Transform, and Transform. We don't want to resize them, but we just want to move them. Let's turn on our preview so we can see what's going on. And now I'm going to move them a little bit to the right. I'm holding Shift to move it a lot. And then you can use your arrow keys up and down to just get it exactly the size you want. So 14 points is looking good. I'm gonna copy that and also move it vertically 14 points. Okay, and this is looking great. We'll say, okay. And now these parts seem a little close and that's because of the new drop shadow. So let's hold option and click on the right arrows. Now the really cool thing about this is that you can use it for anything, but to do that, you have to make a graphic style. So let's click on our graphic style and you can see this little square kind of looks like these other graphic styles that are in there. And that's very telling because we'll need to actually click on this square and pull it up here. You can see that style is now in graphic styles. Okay, so let's hit M on our keyboard and we will draw a rectangle. And now we can just click that graphic style and it will apply it to the rectangle or any other text that we decide to, to use. So you can also type into this and it'll keep all the same effects because you've made a graphic style. So we can just type wow and it'll have the same effect without having several different pieces that you have to type into, if that makes sense. So that's it. It's pretty easy to make a diagonal pattern and then apply it to letters. All right, if you like this video and you wanna see more videos like this, just hit the subscribe button and the little bell and you'll be notified every time a new video comes out. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.